The first scientific pictures has just been released from the James Webb Space Telescope and they are amazing. It's got everybody hyped and today I want to talk about why. So there's actually been a number of different pictures uh, released. It's not just this elliptical galaxy. There's also um, some pictures of the Sun Ring Nebula, which is amazing. They have some pictures of uh, Stevens Quartet, which is also really, really good. But as I said, really this picture with the uh, with the elliptical galaxy is the one that got the most people hyped and myself included but i think for a different reason um see everybody's talking about the amazing clarity and the sharpness and and everything and it is true it is really well done i mean this is not the first time this has been photographed obviously I mean, we've, we've taken pictures of this specific galaxy before um there exist pictures from hubble and if you compare the two pictures side by side you will see that the James Webb pictures are significantly sharper, significantly higher resolution. And it's also a more modern telescope. The galaxy here is quite far away. It's around, ish, five billion light years. Just to put that into perspective, if you take a grain of sand and you put it on your fingertip and you stretch it out arm's length and hold it up against the sky, that's about the size of the galaxy from what we're looking at. So we're looking at some really small targets here, some really, really faint targets. Anything outside our galaxy is naturally going to be extremely faint. Now, one of the things that really surprised me when this was first released was the fact that they were able to take this picture with only 12 and a half hours of exposure. Like if you've done any astrophotography, you will know how big of a deal it is being able to take a picture like that of such a faint object in only 12 and a half hours. I mean, just to put that into to, to perspective here, Hubble would take just over three days, like three days, six hours, something like that, to take a comparable picture. And this all just comes down to the larger main mirror size that you have on a camera like James Webb compared to the main mirror on Hubble. So if we're gonna go into a little bit more detail with the picture here, what we see here front and center in the picture is that elliptical galaxy. Now, an elliptical galaxy is believed to be either early stage galaxies, so early on in their life, um, or galaxies that has recently gone through a um, galaxy merger where two galaxies like collide. They don't collide in the same sense as like a train colliding into a wall, but they more like merge together. Um, and, and then they're expected to be in this, um, in this elliptical shape where they're more like X-shaped, um, just like basically like a ball, X-shaped ball of stars that is then slowly over time, slowly going to flatten out more and more until it gets this more disc shape that you might be, uh, that you might be used to with the galaxy arm, the bolt in the middle and all that stuff. But galaxy evolution is extremely difficult um, to get any hard data on because we as humans have been covering or recording our observations of the, of the night sky for like a few thousand years. And in the lifespan of a galaxy, that's nothing. That's the blink of an eye. So we don't see galaxies evolve in real time. So we are essentially looking at a still picture of the, the universe. And from that still picture, we're trying to predict how galaxies evolve. Now, the part that made me the most excited about the picture is actually those like four galaxies that you can see around it and not the main galaxy itself. These like curved, um, curved pictures of galaxies around it. This is caused by an effect called gravitational lensing. Now, gravitational lensing uh, is caused when you have light passing through massive objects. So if you have like a galaxy, galaxies are heavy, they have a bunch of stars, it's a supermassive black hole in the center. And if we, from our perspective, have another galaxy behind it, you can kind of imagine the light can be curved due to gravity, curved around it, and it can be curved in either direction around it. And then when we receive that light, it looks like that galaxy is actually in two different positions at once. Now, if the galaxy is located right behind the lensing galaxy, then they will take the same time for light to pass around, um, the, regardless of which way it goes. But if it's slightly off center, you will see that one route will be longer than the other. And that actually means that it will take light longer to travel one way than the other. So often when we see these double images of galaxies lensed by another um, massive object, we will actually see the two at slightly different points in time. Nothing massive, nothing like, we, not, something, not like we're gonna see the start and the end of the light of the, of the same galaxy, but they are slightly offset in time from each other, which if we're lucky and have like a supernova explosion happening in a galaxy that happened to be lensed behind an object, 
will be super rare, but if that were to happen, technically we would be able to detect the light coming from the galaxy image in front and then when the supernova go off and then later we'll be able to detect it from uh, from the other galaxy um, that go where or the other image of the galaxy where it goes the long way around if you will and i think that's super super cool and this stuff like this that just makes me love astronomy and cosmology one thing is absolutely for sure and that is that i'm going to keep a very close eye on what's going to come in scientific discoveries from the james webb space telescope in the near future and if you want to keep yourself updated as well the subscribe button is just below the video